So you played with your state team and then you went to a regional team and then from the regional team, they picked a national team. So that year, they, it, the tournament was actually in DC and they picked it on paper, but they didn't have any funding to do anything. So then in 1985, soccer, women's soccer was made a part of the National Sports Festival. So we went down to Baton Rouge as part of the Olympic Festival. And from there, the national team coach was there and picked the team. Um, so at the end of the tournament, he basically said, okay, 18 names, and he said, okay, you guys are the national team. So they, uh, we went home from there, they sent us a plane ticket. We went to New York for about three days, trained, and then went to Italy from there. Um, so that was in 1985. We um, did not, we tied a game or two and lost games. Um, but anyhow, so then in 1986, they actually named Anson Durantz from UNC the national team coach. And so he brought in some of the players from the team before, some of the players he knew from college players, and brought in a pool of 25 players. And we made it up in Minnesota and were part of the Schwann's Cup. And from there, he dwindled the team from 25 down to 18. We went to New York and trained for a little bit, and then from there went to Italy again. Um, so that was 86, and then I had kids in 87, 88, and 89. So my <laughs> national team stuff was done and, and then. But uh, um, obviously, it's, it's, 87 is when they announced that there would be a Women's World Cup. So that's the mm -hmm. year that Fowdy and, and those guys came in. Mia, Fowdy, Christine Lilly came in that year. So um, just her like passion for soccer and her competitiveness are the main um, things. It wasn't necessarily her talking about her experiences or um, stories or much of that, but just like her, her just dedication to soccer and coaching and playing. So we were kids that were like always on the soccer field playing Wednesday nights, like adult week, just super competitive. Um, so for me, that's sort of um, the, the thing that sets her apart. And a lot of these women's national team players is just their competitiveness and their passion for the game. Well, I think, you know, certainly they're a part of elevating the, the women's game. You know, historically, we've been the ones to elevate the game. And I think now with all your different leagues, you know, pl people playing in Europe, uh, people playing in the Asian leagues, um, you know, we're going to, you know, we sort of got a lesson, uh, I think, and we're going to have to elevate our game because a lot of the other countries, you know, the African countries, we saw great presence from the African countries. So we're really going to have to elevate our game and, and push it to be that much better, I think. We, you know, we've been bigger, faster, stronger for a long time, but now you've got Sweden who's big, fast, and strong. Um, but you also have you know, China and Japan and, and Asian countries that are just really technical. Mm -hmm. Spain's really technical. Um, and you know, we need to add to our tactical game. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's gonna be a push all across the board. I think overall the World Cup is gonna do great things for women's soccer and women in general. Um, just the women's game as a whole, I think, is just so exciting right now with, um, you know, especially some of these upsets. Um, just on the world stage, the women's game, just the growth of it is, is super exciting. Um, I think it'll, you know, continue to trickle down to, to youth players that aren't, um, that maybe we haven't quite accessed yet um, with all the upsets and the, and the um, kind of the world stage with all the, women, the women's game and the growth of it worldwide. So it's, it's, been, it's been super um, exciting with all the upsets and um, the competitive games this World Cup. So it's funny, when I started playing, I, I didn't start playing until I was like 12 years old. Um, and so obviously they're starting much younger. Um, but it was also funny, about that same time is when they really started, like, mothers of kids were getting into soccer, had never played before in their lives. And so as 40-year-olds, they were playing soccer for the very first time. Um, and I think you still have a little bit of that, but you much more you have a background of parents having played soccer previously. Um, and, you know, I was just down in uh, Greensboro in mid-July for the over 50, well, actually, over over 50 national championships um, I was down there for, but they actually have over 60, over 70, over 75 age groups. Um, so, you know, it's, it's across the board now. You've got generations of players that have played and, uh, you know, I think it, as kids develop, it's just gonna even get more so.